Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I have two solar panels that I'm really excited to test today. These are from EMF X Solar. These solar panels have shade stopper technology. So uh, let's take a closer look at these and I'll tell you why they're a little bit different. Now this is their 100 watt folding solar panel. And at a quick look, it looks pretty normal. You have nine bus bars, it uses half cut cells, has a really nice ETFE coating. But if you look closer, you'll see that there are a bunch of diodes built in between each one of these solar cells. Now here's a closer look at the solar panel. Now usually these cells will work together to add up their power. And on a normal solar panel, if you happen to shade one of these, the power will stop completely. But because they have these diodes built in, power can skip the shaded cell and continue to output power to the rest of the panel. So instead of getting a blockage of power completely, these diodes allow you to get better performance even when you have partial shading on the solar panel. Now this is the second solar panel that we'll be testing here in the video. It has a very similar design. So it also has nine bus bars, half cut cells, and an ETFE coating. But if you look closely, you'll also notice that it has the diodes just like the other solar panel. So that's what sets these apart from normal solar panels. Now, just to demonstrate the difference between the shade stopper and a normal solar panel, you can see that this Renogy 100 watt solar panel also has nine bus bars, half cut cells, but there are no diodes. So you can see the slight difference between these two panels. But enough talk, let's go ahead and actually test these solar panels. So first we'll test for full peak power and then we'll test for partial shading performance. So each one of these solar panels have been sitting in the sun to heat soak so we can get an equal test on each one. And as for the solar conditions, it's around 85 degrees today. We have fairly clear skies. So I am expecting pretty decent numbers out of these solar panels. Now here's a breakdown of the equipment that we'll be using in the video today. We'll be testing with my Blue Sky Energy MPPT solar charge controller, and it has a built-in shunt and display. So we can see the voltage, amperage, and wattage of each of the solar panels. And that's connected up to my 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And this is discharged to about 75% state of charge. So the voltage is the same for each of the solar panels. And I also will be testing with my voltmeter here so we can test the voltage open circuit. Now it's always important to make sure that your solar panel is angled properly at the sun. So I'm using some bricks and a piece of wood to get the proper angle in this. And I've used the cantrick to set this on the solar panel until the shade disappears. And that's how you know that it's angled properly. So this is the Renogy 100 watt solar panel. We'll test this one first as a control, and then we'll test the other two. Checking the voltage open circuit of the Renogy panel, we're seeing 21.8 volts. Now with the Renogy solar panel connected up to the charge controller, we're seeing 92 watts at 17.61 volts with 5.23 amps. So 92 watts from that Renogy 100 watt solar panel. Now I've just swapped out the Renogy 100 watt panel for the flexible 100 watt shade stopper panel. So let's connect that up. Voltage open circuit for the 100 flex panel is 22.52 volts. So with it connected up to the charge controller, we're seeing 93.6 watts. So just a teeny bit more power, 17.86 volts at 5.23 amps. So now I want to test the shade stopper 100 watt folding panel. So I've aligned this up. It is angled properly. So let's see what the voltage is. Voltage open circuit on the folding 100 watt panel. We're getting 22.02 volts. So this is the 100 watt folding panel connected up. We're getting 83 watts, getting 16.8 volts at 4.95 amps. So about 10 watts less than the other two solar panels. Well, now that we've tested each one of these solar panels in full sun, now I wanna test them in partial shading because every single solar panel will perform well in full sun. But as you get shade on each one of these panels, they're gonna perform differently. Now, if you're in an area um, where you don't really ever get partial shade, then don't worry about purchasing a solar panel that's meant for um, shade tolerance. Um, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're ever camping and there's trees or um, if you live like in an area where you're gonna get shade casted onto a solar panel, or if you, you know, have an RV where um, you have these on the roof and your AC shades partially on that solar panel, um, that's where these shade tolerant solar panels are going to have an advantage. And we're gonna see how much of an advantage you'll see um, from these versus a normal solar panel. Now remember, the technology in this panel here, the Renogy 100 watt, is the newest type of technology. It has the bypass diodes at the top. It's got the nine bus bars. It's got the half cut cells. So that's supposed to be good performing, uh, good performing in shade. That's what you see on their website. But these are specifically designed, these shade stopper solar panels are specifically designed to perform well 
in partial shading. So we'll see what happens as we shade each one of these. So let's get started with our first partial shade test. So we have the Shade Stopper 100 watt folding panel. And this chair here is casting its shadow on two of the solar cells. So I'm gonna do this same test on all three panels. So let's see what wattage we get on this now that it's partially shaded. So this is the 100 watt folding solar panel with two cells shaded. We're getting 71 watts. So before we had 83 and now we are getting 71 watts. So still decent power with two of those cells shaded. So next we're gonna test the Shade Stopper 100 watt flex panel. And the shading is also on two solar cells. So let's see what we're getting on this one versus what we got before. With the Shade Stopper 100 flex panel connected up, we're getting around 80 to 81 watts. Now we got around 93 watts before, so still decent power coming from the 100 watt flex panel. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. I have the Renogy 100 watt panel, and I have two solar cells shaded by the chair, just like our previous test with the other solar panels. Now, I want you guys to guess how many watts we're getting. I haven't looked yet, but I'm guessing it's gonna be significantly less. Let's see what it is. So checking in on the Renogy 100 watt panel with the shading, we are getting 17.5 watts. So way less power than the other two solar panels with the Shade Stopper technology. Now I know I'm gonna have a bunch of people ask me, well, how does this stack up against a SIGS 100 watt panel? Well, guess what guys, I got a SIGS 100 watt panel. So let's see how much this is getting in just full sun and then we'll partially shade it and see how it performs. So with the SIGS 100 watt solar panel, we are getting 90 watts currently in full sun. You'll notice the voltage is just a little bit higher. So 21.14 volts at 4.28 amps. So now I have the chair partially shading the SIGS 100 watt solar panel. Now it's hard to get the proportions correct. This is a much larger footprint than the other solar panels. So I did have to make the shade a little bit bigger here, but it's hard to get it exactly right because I can't tell where two cells are, but let's see how many watts we're getting with this setup. So with the SIGS 100 partially shaded, we're getting around 76.5 watts. So still really good power out of that SIGS 100. So pretty interesting to compare the SIGS 100 to the Shade Stopper 100 Flex Panel. They got very similar results, uh, also in the partial shading. So they both do really well with that. But what about uh, differences in price? Well, the SIGS 100 is about $100 more than a Shade Stopper 100 Flex. And the SIGS also takes up a larger footprint. Um, the monocrystalline solar panels are more efficient. They take up less space and they provide the same amount of power. Um, I'm not sure about durability. I do have good experience with ETFE coated solar panels lasting a while, but if you guys own a SIGS uh, version solar panel, how long has it lasted um, just daily out in the sun? I'm just curious how much uh, durability you get with this before you get lem uh, delamination or fading or cracking on this coating. So leave a comment down below. Now, just for fun, I wanna do one last shading test on each of the solar panels. So I'm just gonna lay this chair out. I'm gonna try to make it equal on each solar panel but just to give it more random shade, let's see how much power we're getting now on the SIGS 100. So with the chair laying down on the SIGS 100, we're getting 30 watts of power. So 19.2 volts, 1.57 amps. So still decent power, even though a chair is laying on the solar panel. So now I have the chair laying out on the Shade Stopper 100 Flex panel. Let's check the charge controller. So with the chair laying down on the Shade Stopper 100 Flex panel, we're getting 28.3 watts. 13.56 volts at 2.09 amps. So now I have the Shade Stopper 100 watt folding solar panel with the chair laying down on it. Now I wonder if this one will get a little bit different power just because you have two separate halves. So I'm not sure how these are wired together, but let's see how many watts we're getting on the charge controller. So with the Shade Stopper 100 folding panel with the chair laying down, we're seeing 25 watts. So a little less power, 13.54 volts at 1.86 amps. Now, if you remember in the full sun test, we did see less power from this panel in the first place. So the ratio seems about the same for the shading on this panel versus the other two that we just tested. So for our final test today, we have the Renogy 100 watt solar panel with the chair laying down, just like the three other solar panels that we've tested. So take a guess guys, how many watts are we gonna see from this solar panel? So with the Renogy 100 watt panel, we are getting 1.1 watts. 12.9 volts at 0 0.09 amps. So I'd say there's a considerable difference between a solar panel that's built for shade tolerance versus a normal solar panel. Now, one additional feature of the Shade Stopper 100 folding panel over the 100 flex panel is that this one has a built-in USB-C port. Now I've connected up my USB-C tester. 
we were getting 54 watts from that, but you can see that it is power delivery 3.0 and it's a 65 watt port. So uh, pretty decent power from a USB-C port on the back of a solar panel. The 100 watt shade stopper folding panel also comes with different adapters. So you have a stock 7909 barrel plug and then that goes to 7909 adapters here, which terminate in MC4, XT60, and Anderson PowerPole. So lots of flexibility. So if you're looking for a solar panel that does well in partial shading, because you have a lot of partial shade where you're using your solar panels, obviously you'd want to go with a option that gives you more power. Now, if you're always going to be using these solar panels in full sunlight, then don't even worry about it. Just purchase a normal uh, 100 watt solar panel and you'll be fine. But you can see that there is a difference. On Renogy's website, they basically say that the bi bypass diodes up here in the junction box, the half cut cells and the nine bus bars give you significant shading performance, but <laughs> you can see from the video that that's not really true. Uh, maybe if you had just a little piece of leaf hanging over one of these cells, you'd still get good performance, but you have to have a solar panel that's specifically designed for shading tolerance to get that decent power. And it's good to see that there are more affordable options now. The SIG's solar panel is priced almost at $300. I think it's at like $279 right now. And you can pick these up for significantly less. So this one is the flexible panel is available for around $159 stock MSRP. And I think it's on sale for around $120. And then the folding panel is a little bit more money. It's MSRP is $219. And I think it's on sale for like $179 or $189. I'm not exactly sure. I'll include the links to them down in the video description. Now I love doing basic solar testing videos like this. Now Shade Stopper is actually a local company to me. They are a company right out of Salt Lake and I live in the Salt Lake Valley. So it's cool to see a local company making a product like this. Um, so I appreciate them sending out the solar panels for tests and I am pretty impressed with the performance in partial shading. So you guys want to let me know what you guys think about these solar panels, um, the pricing, the performance. Um, would you go with a shade tolerant solar panel or would you just go with a regular solar panel? Throw a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you happen to like the video and I'll recommend a couple of other solar videos that you can check out. We'll see you guys in the next one.